we talk a lot about uh, miniature games that are extant, uh, but there's plenty of them that are out there that aren't out there that I would like to see. Please make these now, uh, and uh, <laughs> we will be pitching them, or pitching and at least discussing why they'd make good miniature games uh, right now. So, uh, we got a little list here, because, you know, people love lists, right? Um, so I guess let's just go, let's yeah. just go take it from the top, right? Yeah, I guess. It's kind of a top ten, but not really. <laughs> top ten, whatever. Because <laughs> we kept adding more and it's, more. It's as, it's as Started much as... Started as a top five, and then the, the yeah. juices got cranking. <laughs> the juices got cranking? Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Flowing? as, it's as <laughs> much as a top five. It's as much of a top ten list as the dragon and the dinosaur videos <laughs> that we put out. So, um, okay, top of the top of the list: Power Rangers, Ed, Super Sentai, by extension, Common Rider, and Metal other, Heroes. Metal Heroes, well as, yeah, right? that's Beetleborgs. Yeah, Beetleborgs <laughs> and VR Troopers. So, um, so. Give me the, give me the sales pitch for this. Like, yeah, is I mean, it that's... is it normal? Is it the big one? Like, do they start off small and like well, just I, like an episode? Well, it's weird. I think it would be kind of like Warhammer. In, okay. In the sense that you have so many so many different factions to choose from. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like too dense in that in that option, both yeah. in the the good guy arena and the bad guy arena. Mm -hmm. Plus, you could have like a uh, like, different troop sizes, right? Right. Like, you could have, like, just the normal troops that are, like, you know, the standard rangers mm -hmm. or heroes. Yeah. And then you could go, like, he like the heroes on their, like, vehicles. Oh, interesting. And then you could do the, the zords. Okay. As... And, then the, and then the combined thing, which would, could be, like, the big Hulkin guys. <laughs> Now, uh, monsters. Now, before everybody shuts <laughs> off this video, yes, we are aware of the uh, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid miniature game, which has, I mean, which has some minis, but that's based well, on... Well, at least half of us were, were. I didn't know that was a thing okay. that existed. Well, I am. <laughs> it just came to mind as we were talking. <laughs> uh, but that's not, that's not on this, that's, that's very small, that's more like Hero Quest than okay. it is. That's, that's not the scale yeah. we're talking. We're talking big yeah and, I, and plus like in canon in both the west and eastern versions of the show there yeah. is wars that break out yeah <laughs> in, in superhero tyson <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah so the idea would be like i guess so i mean you just break it down into a war game essentially so yeah. but you couldn't have like okay i've got you know here's MMPR Power Rangers, but you couldn't bring also those same Rangers on bikes and in their Zords and at the like all at the same time, right? Like I don't know how that would work. Well, what I'm saying is that like you'd have to have like w <laughs> your base troops would be um, ah jeez, what was that one huge long? There's a really recent Super Sentai that had like twelve Rangers. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like we haven't got that over here yet. I don't think we did either. <laughs> um, I haven't been keeping up with Power Rangers very well. Is that the train I'm... one? Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about the one that's based, that's like made out of blocks. Uh, it's got some weird Minecraft thing going on. Okay. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't, I, we, don't, we didn't get that one over here, but yeah. I, I keep... I, th I vaguely know what you're talking about, but I didn't like read up enough Right, on so I guess like... your basic troops yeah. would have to be like that huge brick or like Machine Empire or... You know, hmm. Rita's crew or Lord Zed or whatever, you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, but I mean, there's a lot you can do with, with that, with the property t and stuff. Right, yeah, it's a big property, yeah. and especially if you just get all the other Tokusatsu characters in it, then mm -hmm. that would be cool. Even though, yeah, even with like Common Rider, there's like a. Mm -hmm. Huge selection of <laughs> characters yeah, to though, choose from. Though that is different because that's like one man against a uh, an army, basically. Yeah, that's fair. Get the guy in there. <laughs> but you could also have like there there are basic troops could be like those like aging guys. Oh yeah, you know those, like, like from some of the the Zek troopers from yeah. Kabuto. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sure there's oh, there's a lot you could do with that, and I think. 
I think what we've just what I've just struck upon is that the reason that they haven't done anything like that is one because licensing is a nightmare, mm-hmm. and two, there's there's actually there there might be too much <laughs> because every Super Sentai show has their own cast of villains, right? They have their yeah. own putties, they have their own mooks, like, yeah, they're, they have they're their own big guys, and and there's no way that you could accurate well. I mean, there you could even could. be a, there could even be a component like uh-huh. where like you have like two sizes of like the main monster, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like if like mm-hmm. your army is destroyed enough, you could like just switch to like the bigger guy or something. That was uh, that was kind of a mechanic that showed up in the original Monster Apocalypse, which is Ooh. by the way why I didn't put Godzilla on the list. That's why we need a miniatures game because we have Monster Apocalypse. That's. Which is, I'm assuming, pretty it's, much already it's Godzilla. And... fairly <laughs> similar. You could just make yeah. a Godzilla expansion pack for it. Um, I mean, that's why uh, mm-hmm. you don't see, like, a Godzilla board game, because you already have, like, King of Tokyo. And... Yeah, like, Godzilla is well-worn ground. Yeah. <laughs> Back here, somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, Maybe not. It was, oh, oh, no, wait, that's Smash Up. Anyway. Either way. Getting off track. <laughs> um... So I think the reason that, yeah, Power Rangers has not gotten a miniature game is because they probably would have needed to strike on that in the 90s mm. to get really get the hammer on, and they could have built it up from there. Um, but yeah, the... I think it's still going strong, but not as strong as... It's not the... Yeah, it's not the when it premiered. It's here. not the cultural touchstone that it yeah. was, but... Uh, I think the best way, almost the best way you could do that is, like, have a miniature game on the one end, and then have, like, little cardboard standees on the other. Uh, we played Battletech the other week here, mm. and, like, two of the mechs were just cardboard standees. Yeah. From, like, from the box set, so you're not, you know, breaking the bank. Like, Ooh, exclusive miniatures sort of thing. <laughs> but, but, I mean, uh, you could also have that option to, like, get the miniatures if yeah, you wanted. Yeah, or something like, oh, hey, it comes with the, you know, SDL files. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, Power Rangers is one that we started off thinking, why haven't they done this? We started talking about it and realized why they haven't. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, but one reason I did randomly yeah. put it on the list is like right before recording, mm-hmm. we found out that Hasbro got uh, yeah a company that's kind of involved with that mm-hmm. war gaming yeah Avalon tabletop stuff Avalon Hill yeah uh, they did. Uh, Betrayal in the House of the Hill and, and that stuff. So, like, mm, bleh, mm, mm, hey, it's right there. Uh, regardless of... Really, just give me something Power Rangers. I don't even care if it's wargaming. <laughs> you just want the natures. <laughs> the Lightning Collection's pretty good. good I, for action figures. I, mean, I, I just want a... You just want a game. <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> you want a game that's not Chroma Squad. Got it. Um, <laughs> speaking of things that I want as a game, hey, let's talk about Gundam. Um, the model, the model line is already extant. Um, why is there not a game to go with, with all the gunpla? They already have an anime to go with all the gunpla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, Build Fighters exists. Come it's on, real. And I get on it. <laughs> get, get, get with the program. Now, I could easily see them doing something like, um like GURPS with it, like a generic okay. uh, universal roleplay system mm. with that. Um, so you like, oh, hey, look, it's your, uh, you know, hey, it's your Gundams. And like, oh, I've got my Veritech here. Uh, I got my Valkyries and I've got my Destroids and my, uh, <laughs> I guess my Battletech stuff too. <laughs> uh, but like, oh, hey, yeah, no, I brought, this week I brought my Jaegers from Pacific Rim. And, and like, that sort of thing. <laughs> yes? Don't be hated. Palladium already did Robotech. It was horrible. Yeah, I know. That's oh, why I want to... scale. I know, I, I want the 1 to 144 scale. So Speaking can... of Robotech, why don't we have any good Robotech tabletop games? I don't know, but I blame Carl May. But yeah, like, basically, I want a, a system... That I can slot my existing figurines into. Mm. Because I'm going to buy them anyway, because I'm just that sort of weeb. <laughs> I mean. You said it, not me. No, I, boo, not. I'm wearing a Sailor Moonshine shirt. Come on, man. Oh. <laughs> I know what kind. Of, <laughs> I know who I am. Thank <laughs> you. 
I know who I am, Mr. Allen, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no. So, oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, just, like, you have an entire line of 1 to 144 scale high grade HD Universal Century. All these model kits that they keep pumping out year after year after year. Make a game. <laughs> uh, I mean, you could even do something going back to BattleTech again. Yeah. Like there, there's a system that they had where like, mm-hmm. like each limb had like so much damage you could take. Yeah. You could do like a system like that or like, I don't know. It, it's doable. It needs doing. All it needs is somebody to convince a group of Japanese concerns that it's a good idea. Ding. Ah, <laughs> we have struck upon the problem. <laughs> uh, as many American video game developers can tell you, they will say things to you like you don't understand because you're not Japanese. Yeah. Oops. I mean, it's it's true. Great. So I'm going to go skip down and talk about something I... I Please do. I, I want to I talk about. I made myself sad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a new trailer came out mm-hmm. the other day for a movie based on this. Mm-hmm. Looks amazing. And I mm-hmm. and I gave a thought like, oh, hey, this would be really interesting to see as a tabletop game. Mm-hmm. Or not a tabletop game, but yeah, specifically miniature, game. miniature war game. Dune. Mm-hmm. Boom, 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 boom. This, uh, I mean, they already yeah. kind of have a... Okay, so are you aware of Dune 2? The... Yes. Okay, the the RTS game. Yes. It would not be hard to adapt that no, system. No, it, it and would make not. It... Yeah. Yeah, and there's also, uh, if you've watched our sister channel, the board game rundown... Go do it. They once talked about how uh, there's a Dune board game and it just got re-released because of the movie. Right. And same thing. There are a bunch of different like asymmetrical like mm. factions you could choose from the yeah. the Arrakis House, Harkonnen, uh, the the Fact Freem- flying the fat Fremen, man. Yeah. the Fremen, <laughs> the Fremen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot you could do with that. By the way, that Dune game very hard for a six year old. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't understand. What's a Sardaukar? car? <laughs> yeah, but it's it's also also kind of an interesting setting. I don't know how many other wargaming stuff you have set on like a primarily desert planet. You're like kind of grinning at me <laughs> if as I miss something very very hard and no it's just i know you're uh, you're <laughs> not into the warhammer scene, so you oh, don't so get that it. is. A thing in Let Warhammer. me tell you, friend, about the Adeptus Mechanicus, who live on Mars, which is a very red planet. That's a red planet, but it's not... It's a desert red planet. Okay. Yeah. No, so, fair. the Admech in Warhammer are kind of dune, Dune-ish. Okay. Like, Dune-ish, I guess. So, uh, But their the latest uh, Archaeocopter they came out with is kind of a nod to the dropships from Dune. Yeah. So, like, you, you could definitely get like I I saw them and ships. I almost I almost thought they were like the mm-hmm. Dune ships. So. Yeah, <laughs> ain't an accident. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, no Dune Dune is a good choice. I also just want a gigantic sandworm miniature, like there isn't already one out there somewhere. Oh, I'm sure there is. <laughs> like, it's just a giant purple worm, you know. Purple. Oh, I did, the the purple worm from D and D. Oh, okay. I was like. There's no purple in Dune. <laughs> it's all it's all dry, gritty, desperate colors of browns. All right, and, we're gonna, and we're extremely gonna bright blue for the eyes. We're, anyway, we're moving along. Move on. <laughs> uh, this one is uh, this one's for me. <laughs> uh, Monster Hunter. Uh, we were talking about asymmetrical war games a little bit, and. Monster Hunter is a group of four adventurers trying to beat the stuffing, trying to bully a wyvern for four and a half minutes, basically. Um, <laughs> so, like, I was trying to think of something. How, how can I can combine my favorite fantasy critters, like 
uh, dragons, and, you know, I love dinosaurs, too. Mm. And I was like, oh, right, there's already a game that does that, and it's called Monster Hunter. <laughs> which, of uh, course, are a fan. <laughs> which, of course, I'm a huge fan of. Now that Monster Hunter World is out, and they have fixed most of the problems <laughs> with the original game system. Um, but, like... Give me minis, give me dudes. I'll I'll, I'll play it. I, I swear, <laughs> I promise, I'll play it by myself. And this is a great thing because you can make this game that you can play solo mm-hmm. because you can play solo on Monster Hunter too. Yeah, and you can it run. I think it would run a lot like Kingdom Death Monster or whatever it is, Monster Kingdom Death. I have no clue what you're talking about. It's so a, you're it's just a, saying words to again, me at it's this a, point. <laughs> yeah, well, it's an asymmetrical war game. Also, okay, where you are. Uh, Basically, you start off as a uh, naked human. <laughs> like, as with, one does. As one does. <laughs> uh, like, dropped into a pit, basically, to fight a critter. Oh, And okay. then you kill it, and you scavenge it for parts, and then you make a... Like, you can make a village elsewhere. Do you get, like, card draws? Yeah. You? Okay, yeah, that's... Yeah, that'd yeah. be pretty cool. I'm thinking, I'm thinking it'd be more... Uh, Monster Hunter would be more dice-based than card yeah, draw, but... Yeah, like, that's fair. Kid out your dude, make new stuff. Hey, you get this buff. Hey, you get that buff. And like each dice roll after you kill it would be like, mm-hmm. it would have like a separate table for each monster to like it. Like, yeah. Oh, like, this hey, is what I get. Oh, hey, I got a good carve this time. <laughs> I mean, we could probably futz it in the game system that you don't have to roll for carves <laughs> because that'd be like. A long campaign of that, and you just have to keep grinding the same gosh dang monster <laughs> over and over again. I could, I could just play the game if I wanted to do mm-hmm. that. But uh, yeah, that would, I think that would be a swell, swell way to do things. Plus, you get miniatures that are this big, you get adventures that are that big. You could make them, um, you know, you could make them modular, pop off weapons, put on different weapons. Yeah, which would be helpful because like. The game, if people don't know, the like the the beasts are fighting. Yeah. Like, they're different, and there are different yeah. ways to take them down, and you need different items, and yeah, you need different statuses and buffs to All put on them. Jazz, so. Yeah, it, it's it's really it's really close to D and D actually, um, which is why there's a D and D variant uh, for Monster Hunter, which is I think it's pretty well balanced, but again, it's Monster Hunter, so you need to get. You kind of just need to get kicked a few times by the <laughs> by the big beasties. So, speaking of games that need desperately miniature games, yeah, Dynasty Warriors. Okay, that yeah. seems really obvious. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's basically a, a bunch of like you know mm-hmm. standard troops and a hero yeah. going against other standard troops and a hero, and it takes place. Mm-hmm. Primarily in Romance of the Three Kingdoms yeah. saga, yeah. But with all the offshoots, it can you can go a lot of ways with this. Yeah, you can go samurai warriors. You can't really do Gundam, sorry. <laughs> but there you are could do Gundam Dynasty warriors though. Well, right, but like balancing that would be just ridiculous. But <laughs> like for a for a historical war game that doesn't rely have an over reliance on on historical accuracy because there's nothing historically accurate about half the crap that they do in dynasty warriors uh yeah like eh, yeah I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's they're, ripe they're, for it yeah <laughs> i mean there, there there is some historical accuracy stuff and then there isn't well right it's, like at, at certain yeah. battles and certain things happen but like Lu but Hu was based not a god. on like yeah yeah books one very long book. Yeah. One very long and frankly boring book. <laughs> I have uh, not read it, so I yeah, can't say. I tried. <laughs> I could not. <laughs> yeah, I don't have much more to say about about dinosaurs except uh, it seems like an obvious choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like you could just get <laughs> it'd be it'd run kind of like um, hero. It'd be like hero hammer basically. <laughs> like you just have this big block of troops and you just put your dude into it. <laughs> and he's just like, okay, well, I do this, this, and this, and wipe out this, and then you get the like the duel mm. aspect of it, of like fighting your fighting a <laughs> I defeated an officer sort of thing. And you like have like you know bigger creatures and stuff like giant enemy crabs. Uh. But yeah, yeah, no, Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors, <laughs> Samurai Warriors, uh, Warriors Troy. 
Yeah. Like, they've done a lot. You can do a lot with it. It's all, like, I'm thinking a lot of these are are so obvious because, obvious to us, and they haven't actually done it because it's so obvious, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, plus it's that whole, like, uh, yeah, cross international water yeah that's the other problem like it's it's definitely a japanese franchise Mm -hmm. and war gaming stuff is primarily made in britain britain (laughs) well in america (laughs) anyway yeah let's move on let's move on um speaking of uh dynasty warriors just straight up warriors like the movie warriors uh warriors come out to play yay so, um, again, we're, we're taking it from the battlegrounds of, uh, you know, fantasy China and fantasy Japan and taking it to the mean streets of fantasy New York City in the 70s. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Where a bunch of different gangs are, yeah, are a bunch fighting of, for... Bunch of wacky looking gangs. Wacky looking gangs fighting for supremacy. They don't, like, the Warriors don't want supremacy. They just yeah. want to get home. <laughs> well, right. But, I mean... But, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that concept, it's very Necromunda. It's very, um, very Mordheim. Uh, except it's a licensed property. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you, I mean, it's it's nice because you don't really... Like, a firearm would be very rare, so there's not a lot of shooting. Um, and a lot of it is just beat the stuff out of each other. Yeah. You know, that sort of brawling. <laughs> like... We get a lot of tactical games where it's like, okay, well, we'll move this huge rank of dudes, like, forward this many paces, and then they'll stand and shoot uh, and shoot their muskets, and yeah. then... Yeah. Well, and speaking of the getting home aspect, that can mm-hmm. be a really interesting twist where, like, mm-hmm. where you, like, have a map. Yeah, the plan, and... the plan is get off the board, basically. Yeah, like, like one group has mm-hmm. to get to, like, one side, and the other group just has to stop them. Yeah, kind of thing, you it was know? very very narrative based. Um, though you could just do straight up skirmishes. Yeah. Um, but you know they have like was it like the baseball furies or whatever? <laughs> they have the, all these wacky uh, critter dudes. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen Warriors in such so a long, long time that but, yeah. I can't remember all the gangs. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just, it'd be entirely based on like. Like, the most powerful weapon in the game would be, like, a knife. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just like, yeah, dude. Or a baseball bat with, like, nails in yeah. it or something. But, yeah, this is like, oh, man, my, my leather armor, which is just this vest, doesn't doesn't protect me very well. You could have, like, beat up cars. Like, like, yeah, huh. like, <laughs> burned out buildings. Yeah. No, I, like, I think it, it's, got, it's got legs. Mm. It's just... It's not been done yet. If for some reason, completely different movie, but same type of thing, I, w- I would think it would be very funny mm-hmm. if you had a bunch of gangs you could get for the Warriors, uh-huh. but then just the Shogun of Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> from the uh, Shogun of Harlem expansion pack. <laughs> yeah. From Last Dragon, right? Yeah, Last yeah. Dragon. <laughs> Weird, weird, weird thing, but like it would fit right in. <laughs> yeah, and a nice thing, and we're kind of creating these on the fly. But when you have a system like this, then you could also have Dolomite and <laughs> uh, Black Dynamite and all these. Uh, you know what I mean? Like uh, yeah. Foxy Brown shows up, and like this hodgepodge of uh, of seventies uh, exploitation style films could all have you know have their time the sun mm. limelight moonlight street light i guess street light yeah, yeah. like because if you get because the nice thing about a system like that is that if you have a good enough system you can slot anything into it with relative ease but yeah oh, i was gonna that's not a really great segue i was gonna say something i was like no nah, i don't want to say that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, fire, fire emblem. Fire emblem. <laughs> yes, a game that can easily be slotted into something. <laughs> uh, dating sim? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, but, fire emblem is basically a miniatures war game, anyway. Yeah, it's basically a miniatures war game. You have like your troops. Mm-hmm. You have your specific hero units that you move around, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, you get, that... all, get all your waifus and 
you know, <laughs> miniature one, form, one eighth scale. La <laughs> yeah. Now I don't, I don't have a lot of love for Fire Emblem or Golden Sun or any of those. I basically know them because of um, Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, there's a whole lot yeah. of guys with swords. Fire Emblem is kind of weird too because it's like specifically um, mm-hmm. like generation based, like, mm-hmm. and like not all the games are part of the same like universe of other games it's so weird it's, it's their timelines and all this other weird stuff that might be hard to actually like mm-hmm. fit into the, the war gaming theme but you could take some of the games like right but i mean very much expand them out into, it's, like, yeah that's yeah. you're just ex- you're describing expansion packs basically yeah, i guess <laughs> oh dear but like the, the newer one the three houses i mm-hmm. think it's called yeah that could work very easily for just boom there you go and like a, a little aside to that too, because mm-hmm. it's very similar system, very similar setup. Uh, the Advanced Wars. Oh yeah. Too. I'll just <laughs> uh, I'd almost. Really quickly. I think I think we just hit on why uh, why miniature wargaming really hasn't caught on in in Japan because they have because games. they have Fire Emblem and they have <laughs> consoles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because space is also at a premium. If you didn't notice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that that type yeah. of game too. Like Shining Force is also a, a similar type of game that could go into that, but anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. There are a lot of old old games that basically, again, we just need a unified system, and then we need somebody making models for it. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Uh, I guess I'm up next. Uh, speaking again. <laughs> so if you like your fantasy war games, but you really want your uh, realistic-ish war games in it, then by golly, let's just get Drifters. Um, for those of you who don't know, Drifters is a mildly obscure anime, which only had one season so far. It's also a manga, too. Yeah, right? it's a manga. Uh, done Started by Kota Hirano, yeah. um, who did uh, uh, Helsing. So you know it's super action-y and super gory. And gritty and dark. And... And, yeah, well, <laughs> there's a whole yeah there's a whole story arc about them having to learn how to make gunpowder. <laughs> And All right. you, you know hey, how you make gunpowder, yeah. sulfur, and saltpeter. You know where you get some of that stuff, corpses. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. So like Billy the Kid shows up. Uh, a zero uh, pilot and his plane shows up. Um, because <laughs> Nobunaga Oda shows up in everything, uh, especially in Japan. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you've got your hero units, you've got your like special wackadoo characters, Joan of Arc shows up, friggin' Rasputin's in there, you know, and, and some of these characters have, <laughs> uh, some of these characters have like legitimate magic powers, like Rasputin. Joan of Arc, yeah, well Joan of Arc like can cast, like she runs around in heavy armor and she can throw fireballs. Oh, why not? Well, yeah, and it's like, it's weird because... There's a group of drifters that have no su- no superpowers specifically, and just are great warriors and leaders and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And just are really smart. And then there's a bunch of brain dead idiots with magic powers, basically, <laughs> who are just nothing but like berserkers, essentially, like in a, in essence. Now it's been a minute since I watched the show, so don't quote me on any of this. <laughs> but like on the one hand, you have um, like Billy the Kid shows up. And uh, you know, uh, I can't even remember the the main character's name um, because he was a nobody samurai. No, but uh, Toyohisa is his name, uh, and he's just like the way he died. Okay, so full disclosure: the characters in your in this war game are already dead, <laughs> uh, and they got shuffled over to this other universe which is full of orcs and elves and demons and monsters and all that other stuff because <laughs> of course to to fight <laughs> another war because that's pretty much all they're good for right uh so oda's there and uh yoichi of the taira clan minamoto clan no, yoichi no minamoto i think uh, from the genpei wars hmm. like so we got one from the 1600 hundreds one from the 1200s a couple from the 1800s and the 1940s um uh also jesus is there except bad jesus mm. it's weird it's it really made uh really made plain to me the difference between uh the difference between what 
Japan thinks of certain figures in history <laughs> and what, uh, well, I'm blaming the entire country of Japan, what Kota Hirano thinks of certain figures in history. Um, well, we could make a whole video about yeah. Japan and Christianity, so <laughs> we might want to sideline that. Failing that, go read my, uh, <laughs> go read my graduate thesis. <laughs> <laughs> for my for my bachelor's degree where I talked about this at length. Don't actually read it. I, I was about to say, link in the description. description. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, point is that um, again, it's it, it's that hero hammer thing. It, it'd be Age of Sigmar esque, except you'd have I, you'd put more weight on your hero units than on your troop units. Right. It'd be cool. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to kick this over back to you. Okay. I'm tired of talking. <laughs> um, so I don't really know how this would work, but I've been sort of reading this, and I hmm. sort of stopped because I got burned out on it halfway through Sinbad the Sailor, <laughs> Arabian Nights. Uh, mm -hmm. But, I mean, that that's a whole unique style of mm. just um, design you could do, you yeah. know? bunch of different characters, bunch of different um, stories, and you could war game it out, too. Oh, know? yeah, easily. Um, yeah, like I said, you could have, like, stuff like Sinbad. You could have, like, Aladdin as, like, characters. and But you could also just have hmm. troops of, like, Persian armies, like, fighting one another. and That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Having mystical items and objects from from the Arabian Night stories like thrown in and mm -hmm. basically what we're saying is that Age of Sigmar needs a needs an Arabian faction. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, and if you won't do it, then we'll we'll come up come up with it on our own. Have flying carpets that people can like yeah. zoom around. <laughs> and, uh, I was also thinking or uh, the mechanical uh, horse. Yeah, or whatever. I was thinking of uh, uh, Maji. Oh yeah, yeah, Secret of the Secret of the Labyrinth, is it? Or what's the what's the subtitle on that? The anime. You know, I don't know. You know what I mean. But it was just like, like yeah, that would be an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we, did we want to go with the first idea we had, or we want to go with the second idea? Let's just put them together because okay. I don't think I, I don't think we can talk much about the for this first idea. Yeah, Mortal Engines would be really cool because yeah. Mortal Engines looks really cool. It was a book right yeah it started off as a book series and then it became a movie that bombed at the box office oh did that movie come out i didn't even know oh yeah no, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's come and gone okay and as i hear it bombed at the box office neither of us have seen it so we can't really neither extrapolate much year old girls so we didn't watch this movie <laughs> but uh for for those of you who don't okay. know it's like giant like yeah this is like cities moving but cities but they're also like giant tank cars mm-hmm something i don't know look up the trailer if you're interested in or we'll put up a picture yeah that right trailer here. the trailer got me interested on a on one level but and it, on his on his on an aesthetic level yeah on aesthetic an aesthetic level, level but did not did not exactly hook me for on the uh, yeah. every other level possible <laughs> i mean that's fair i mean, like in much the same I mean, way as the hunger games has really good trailers i could not tell you what happens in those <laughs> movies i watched like the first two I watched the first one and it got really mad because uh, I could think of a bunch of pre-industrial societies that could run roughshod over them. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, the final one is. But yeah, we're we're gonna go into the one we know more about. Yeah. Red Wall. Red Wall. Julia. <laughs> Brian Jacques Red Wall series. Oh boy. Um. Yeah, like. It is, it, it, it's it, cool. Yeah, like it's freaking nuts. Yeah, it's a book series. Yeah, and you a have long like, book series. Oh yeah, very long book series, and I, mm. also like a short-lived PBS cartoon, I think. Yeah, but it has like, I think more more or less tinier woodland forest creatures, mm. but it's like a fantasy setting. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember who they fight against. I think just other, other words, rats. Like, yeah. yeah, like rats. Well, okay, creatures. so there are some, there are some, it's like kind of orcs and goblins sort of thing. Um, there are some uh, races, quote unquote, in the universe that are bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's mostly predators is the problem. <laughs> um, so the first Redwall book follows the, follows the adventures of Matthias, who is a, uh, oh, he's a squire at the yeah. Redwall Abbey, from which the series takes his name. 
and he has to go and find uh, the sword of Martin the Warrior to go and take. I mean, it's kind of um, it's kind of Arthurian, but uh, mm-hmm. he has to get this uh, sword to fight off Clooney the Scourge, who is a giant rat. Um, and he's, uh, I mean, like they just straight up murder each other uh, in like a watership down sort of way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but along the way he gets like, uh, there's so many different factions like, okay, there's a red wall and you have all these, you know, not really fighters, but you have a, a small cadre of like Constance, the badger. Uh, I mean, so like mouse badger, <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, you have, uh, like the hedgehogs with their super spiky and, you know, they can just roll into enemies and then you have just these hordes of rats and, you know, foxes, uh, the birds come in though. They're psychotic. Uh, you could get Squire Julian Gingerveer, the giant <laughs> orange cat. Yeah. It's like this monster unit <laughs> just pulls over these dudes. <laughs> And then you, you know, you could take it from Redwall. You could go back into the Martin the Great series. You could go off into Salamandistron. You could go off into all these different yeah, books. Yeah, no, there's a lot, a lot of possibilities. It is a massive universe that probably takes place in a, you know, in a, <laughs> in an area <laughs> the size of this building, <laughs> because the mice are not big. <laughs> yeah. There's but. a. a... Another one, too, that made me think, mm-hmm. like, as you were talking, uh, Mouse Guard. Oh, yeah, Mouse Guard. Similar. Yeah, Mouse Guard has a good RPG to it, but oh, it doesn't really? have, I think. Okay. I think it has a splat book, but I don't think it has a miniatures game to go with it specifically. Yeah, yeah and I, just, I just remember that because we used, for some reason I, I was remembering that concept trailer that, that mm-hmm. Fox put out before they got bought out by Disney. Uh, I was like, oh. Things. Oh, so awesome. Mm-hmm. I just want something like that, a red yeah. wall. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, a red wall would be great. Um, Get on it, game designers. Yeah. Kickstart <laughs> that. What were you thinking? <laughs> oh, you just hurt me deep in my soul with that one. But, yeah, no. Um, the problem... Okay, so why haven't these been made? Well, for a number of reasons we've talked about here. But also because the miniature wargaming space is very hard to break into because there's GW, and then there's the Pathfinder miniatures and the D&D miniatures, and then mm-hmm. everything that Reaper's put out. And then there are your real specialty games like Battletech that come out, and they're for Grand Yards. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then there's not a lot of like there's stuff there's legacy games like Gaslands that have come out which are super rad. Uh, there's also the Star Wars stuff too. Yeah, the Star Wars Legion and Star Wars X Wing. And they're also the. Um, well, yeah. Point being that it's yeah. hard to break into. And also this. Whiskers with the Hero Clicks. Oh yeah, and the Hero Clicks stuff that still comes out. Um, it's hard to break into it, so. Well, we're lamenting the fact that they, these don't have game systems to go with them. We also kind of understand why. <laughs> yeah, like, if you don't... Like, speaking of hero clicks, mm-hmm. what's interesting, I was never really that much into hero clicks, mm-hmm. but I was into its predecessor, Mage Knight, which oh, lasted, yeah. like, only a couple of years, and then hero clicks came out, and that's still going. Yeah. And hero clicks has been around for a good, like... Decade, at least? 13 years, yeah, I think. Yeah, something like that. Getting on 15, I think. Yeah, but the thing is with HeroClix is that all the all the stuff that you need to play it is on the on the clicker, right? Yeah, exactly. Mage Knight tried to update their rules and it tanked. Yeah. Uh, well, and it then, used to be on the clicker as well, but right. But then they updated everything, so all, now all your all your they weren't even like miniatures. Mage Knight was pretty big, wasn't it? Or am I no? Mage Knight was miniatures. Oh, okay. uh, Shadow Realm was the big one. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like Which I was also kind of like in until it's. Stop being a thing. <laughs> yeah, the the biggest the biggest problem with miniatures games is power creep and like once you actually get to market. Mm. So there you have it, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's the biggest and issue. And it's also that zeitgeist thing where it's like you have to like know what the people want when they want it, mm-hmm. and if you don't, it's not going to last very long. Yeah, and I feel like that for a lot of the stuff that we've talked about here, like if it doesn't. Like stuff like Marvel Crisis, 
stuff like Excuse Marvel me. Crisis Protocol is out, and people are like, yeah, this is a real fun game that I played for, you know, the entire mission pack, mm-hmm. painted up the miniatures, and now they sit on my mantelpiece, and it's very cool. <laughs> um, but, like, the Warriors, if you were going to do a mini game out of that, you probably should have done that when the video game hit. <laughs> Um, well, you know, Drifter. I mean, it's also the game also came out like what twenty years after the actual. Film. Yeah, so like, <laughs> so so props to the longevity of that that <laughs> franchise. But like, if Power Rangers was gonna get a miniature game, I guess you could do that anytime. But we, they've had a big resurgence, and again, yes, we know Battle for the Grid. So my whole point yeah. is Candyland <laughs> should get a war game. They, they, they made a Candyland war game. They made a Candyland war movie. It was called Django Unchained. Whew, that got weird. I'm off the show. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't leave me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the big reason a lot of these don't have war games to them is because um, that's kind of a... Uh, I hate to say, again, like, I hate to say, like, oh, their cultural time has passed, but that's not true. It's just, breaking into the war games market is hard. Having a limited run miniatures war game is expensive. And uh, if you don't, if you don't keep up on your rules, like, keep abreast of them, keep on top of them, you know, to deal with, like, power creep and that sort of thing, then you're just going to end up with people sitting around being like, oh, man, sure was a cool mini game for, like, six months. And then the Gronyards got into it and they screwed it up. <laughs> Just like uh, like trying to play uh, X-Wing competitively. That was a friggin' nightmare. Oh. <laughs> the tryhards from Chicago coming out. Like, oh yes, I have the best X-Wing list ever. No one can defeat it. Oh. And it's just like... Oh no, I've ever. been defeated. Yeah, it's just like, ah, oh, dude, like... This is a charity event. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm maybe coloring my own. Uh, but like, um, you know, even with Warhammer, I went to a, a charity tournament and friggin' guys were like, I'm testing my Adepticon list here. I'm like, it's a charity. It's for, it's for shiggles. <laughs> yeah, well, some people just really like to win, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, you know what I have to say about that? It's a game. It's a freaking game, dude. It's a game. Come out and have fun. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, like Fire Emblem, Dynasty Warriors, Gundam, Power Rangers, all this stuff that's primarily a Japanese artifice, shall we say, is um it doesn't have a war game because they don't have space for war games. <laughs> and I mean this in the at least in the cities. Mm. And it if it was going to have a war game, it would have done it by now, I, I feel. Eh, um, never know. Gundam being the exception, they did put out a Gundam board game that's Japan only. Because for some reason they don't think that Americans like giant robots, I guess. I mean, like, if you, like, I don't know when, how long it'll be when this video comes out, but. Like a week or so. Yeah, but like, uh, they just put out like a Skyrim Tabletop mini game. Yeah, and they have a Fallout miniature game, which seems to be quite effective. But, not but effective. like Skyrim, like that's been out for a while. Yeah, Skyrim and they came just out just like... put out like a mm-hmm. this tabletop thing for it. So I mean, I wouldn't say it's a hard pass if it's not a new property. Right. Yeah, but <laughs> Skyrim is also one of the most popular fantasy role-playing games basically ever made and and it yeah. mo- uh Modifus, i think or whatever the you know the uh, the fallout one is is no spring chicken either but it's pretty good by all by all accounts i'll take your word for it yeah i guess <laughs> uh, here it's nice <laughs> it's just yeah what's the what's the hold up people give me my monster hunter <laughs> board game Come on. Need it. Need it just right, right there. So, um, yeah, unless you have any further thoughts on the matter. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. So, 
Uh, that being said, hey, miniature war games are great. Um, give me more kitsch to put on my mantelpiece or in shelves in my bedroom that will make women scared when they come to the house. Um, like, oh, it's another weirdo. Darn it. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Anyway, we're gonna we'll we'll see you next time. Uh, the next time we get real desperate to talk about things that aren't Warhammer. <laughs> so <laughs> for the miniatures rundown, I've been CJ. That's Jeff. We'll catch you next time. I go here now. If you like what you just saw, why don't you hit that subscribe button and get updated about everything that we're working on here? And while you're at it, you can check out our 1,000 points or bust playlist here at the Miniature Rundown on Game Twaddle. Thanks for watching.